Today is uh, Thursday, July 25th, 2024. And again, I'm in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 9. This precious scripture that speaks of this unspeakable joy that's in us, since we're talking about being released in joy by understanding that we receive it by the presence of God in our life, that we keep it by simply understanding that his word's full of joy and by today following him in obedience. So listen to this carefully. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, in whom though now you see him not, Yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So I would tell you that we keep this joy and we practice living in it by obedience because joy follows obedience. <laughs> joy follows obedience. I got to get you to catch that. When I obey God, it pleases God, and he just keeps releasing more of his presence into my spirit. In verse 5, it says, who are kept by the power of God, this shield of God's power by faith comes from our obedience. And the first step of obedience is when I recognize I sinned against God, I repent. God commandeth everywhere that men repent of their sin. And when we disobey God, we break down the shield of God's power around us. And then we got this mess and we, we lack joy. Verse eight says, whom having not seen ye love, <laughs> whom having not seen ye love, you've never put your eyes on Jesus yet, physically. Though now you don't see him, now, though now you see him not, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. In John 15, verses 9 through 11, this is what the Bible says. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I've spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. I've got to read that again, because this the word of God can turn things around for every one of us. John 15, 9 through 11, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. I said, joy follows obedience. I think verification of that is in John 15, 9 through 11. If you want your soul to be on fire and you want to be daily fascinated with God, then you and I must obey him. If you want joy abundant and inexpressible, then you and I must obey God's commands. Our obedience to God gives him pleasure. When God receives pleasure from our lives, the influence of his smile brings satisfaction and hope to our frail spirits. 
If you want to keep the joy of the Lord activated in, in your life, if I want to keep it activated in my life, I must learn to obey God consistently. I need to practice obedience. I don't know if you remember this in your home of origins, and some of you maybe don't have a, a great memory of your home of origins, and maybe your parents were gone when you were at an early age for whatever reason. But if if you grew up in a, in a biblical home where there was a, a mother and father, the plan of God, and children to that marriage, then there was peace in the home when children obeyed the parents. Remember that? I do. And I might have been an instigator of a lot of lack of peace because I not only had some rebellion that needed to have the rod of correction to deliver me from it, but I had a mischievous little mind sometimes. But when I obeyed my parents, there, there was just a peace in the house. And when the rest of the kids did too, of, the, of my four siblings, there was a lot of peace. So as a child, I had a lot to do with the peace. So obedience to my parents gave great satisfaction to my mom and dad. And it kind of spread throughout all seven of the members of the family. Jesus states, if you obey my commandments, you abide in my love. The converse is true because God hates iniquity. Disobedience to God is, is, is iniquity. It's immoral. So our disobedience distances us from God's love. We move ourselves away from God. God didn't move. We moved away. If you keep his commandment, you abide in his love. And I said this to you that my joy might be in you and your joy might be full. Wow. Just one question. Are you obeying what God has commanded you? And I recall in the Great Commission at the end of Matthew 28 that we're to go and teach them to observe, that is, obey all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And when we do, the joy of the Lord is in us. My joy remains in you and your joy is full. So if you want to keep joy and practice living in joy, obey. So Lord Jesus, I want to obey because I have had this prayer reverberating through my mind for months now. I want to please you. Just want to please you. Help all of us to please you. I give you praise for your power in us to do so and your joy in us to fill us with joy. Thank you. Amen. God loves you today. He's covering you with his power, his strength, and his joy. Have a great day.